Uh, we're in chapter 26. Uh, we've got a good quarterly coming up next month in December, the book of Matthew. It's a good, it's a good study, and uh, uh, just, just, just get ready for it. I want to look today as we uh, look into our lesson, we can see uh, uh, again the testimony before a king. Uh, let, me, let me look back in chapter 9. Uh, I wrote it down here. Uh, uh, in chapter 9, we see Paul's actual testimony, his actual conversion, what took place. In chapter 22, uh, we see Paul giving his uh, testimony at another time. I wrote it down here so that I wouldn't forget where, what it was, but uh, Paul, Paul give his uh, uh, testimony here before I uh, wrote it and couldn't find it. Isn't that something? Uh, Paul, anyway, Paul give his testimony again in chapter 22 of the book of Acts and, and how then that he, uh, uh, he, spoke, he spoke to the uh, to the people there about his conversion and how God took care of him and, and how then what happened in his life. And, and then uh, uh, we see over in, where we're at today, Paul's uh, given his testimony again. And I, I've said this before that our testimony will speak to people that nothing else will. And it's not all, always the testimony of, of, the, of our conversion but the testimony of the way we live, the way that we present ourselves, the way that we do things around the house, the way that we do when we go to the grocery store. Paula used to be a, a work in a drugstore as a uh, uh, pharmacist, as, as a tech, and uh, ring up people, and she said there wasn't anybody worse than old retired preachers that would, that would just fly off the handle at her over nothing. And uh, she, she had some that... Uh, uh, she knew real well that I uh, kind of lost respect for the way that they talked to the clerks in their offices back there. And uh, we need to present ourselves in, be in a better way than that. We, we need to let people know uh, just by the way that we walk, by what we wear, by how we act. By, uh, by our actions when things don't work out for us? Do we, do we throw the uh, golf club into the water? Do we throw the golf club halfway across the, uh, the place? Do we throw the shotgun down when we don't hit it? Do we uh, throw the fishing rod in when we don't hook it? Or, or do we say it was just God's will and laugh and go on about it? That's, uh, uh, that's the way it should be done and that's the way today that uh, how we present. And, and as we look here, we can see first off and what we're looking at, and I, I, want, to, I want to look at the key verses uh, is in verse number 19. It said, Whereupon, O King Agrippi, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. And, and we'll look at that in just a few minutes, but that was the key verse. And the lesson objective is to recognize the inner spiritual need even of those that are outwardly successful. Recognize the inner spiritual need even of those that are outwardly successful. What have we got on the inside of us? Do we have something there? You know, sometimes, sometimes we get tired. And when we get tired, sometimes we just don't seem like pushing. And sometimes, now believe this or not, sometimes you may get to the point that it's hard to pick up your Bible and study. You ever been there? It's hard to pick that Bible up and study because, boy, I'm really in the valley, and, and, and it's hard to do that. And it's hard sometimes to pray, even though we need to. But there's times in our life that it's hard to pray. It seems like our prayers don't go any higher than, 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 than just, uh, uh, just nowhere. It seems like we're praying out of a 55-gallon drum, and it's not doing nothing. But I'll tell you something that I've learned. That's when we're really getting through. Because that's when we're really serious about what we're praying. 
And that's when we really pray and through to God and God is hearing us. So uh, we just need to recognize that uh, it, it's, it's what we feel inside and we need to overcome our fear of witnessing with the calm assurance of God's presence. Uh, I've had people to call me and say, Preacher, uh, and these are older Christians, uh, you need to hurry up and get over to so-and-so's house. They've been talking to me and they want to get saved. I say, okay, what do you want me? We want you to come and lead them. I say, why can't you? Say, oh, we don't know how to do We can't do that. You need to come. Everybody in this church needs to know how to win somebody to Jesus. When they get to that point, you need to know what can I do to lead them to Jesus. And really the simplest thing you can do is the Romans Road. Romans Road, chapter 310 and 323. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners in chapter 5 and verse 8 that God commanded his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us uh, 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 chapter 6 and verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord Romans 10 9 and 10 for with the mouth confession is made on the salvation that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life it's a simple thing to do then you build on them scriptures to you can lead that individual to Jesus and once you get started and have this wrote down, I encourage everybody to take your Bible and mark that Romans riled out. Uh, go from Romans 6, 10, and 23, then put down at the bottom. That's the way I do my Bible with all of my messages. I know where I'm going to next, just with the scripture on the side of my Bible. Go then to the next one, which is Romans 5, 8, then Romans 6, 23, and then Romans 10, 9, and 10, and, and pick that all the way through so that when you pick up your Bible, Bible, you can do that. We all need to know how to do that. And the next thing is to, to, to do our part to fulfill the Great Commission. What is the Great Commission? Go ye therefore into all the world and teach and to preach and to baptize them and to show these people that the, the Great Commission is found over. Uh, I'm, I'll get started on my lesson. I didn't. Uh, uh, I thank Brother David this morning for being, for teaching for me there last week. And, uh, but the Great Commission is found in, in Matthew 28 and verse 18, 19, and 20. He said, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All his power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even till the end of the world. That's the Great Commission. And thank God there's probably not another church anywhere around that does the Great Commission like you guys guys do. You send money to Brazil. You, I, I don't know where all you do send money around the world to help people. Now you're filling up Christmas boxes to be sent to thousands of little kids. And uh, you might say, we, we can't go. Yeah, but uh, your wallet can go. And, that, and thank God here at the church, uh, the wallet does go everywhere around the world. That's the Great Commission, is sending that money that these missionaries don't have to worry about coming home to raise money to get their account out the red so that they can continue on. Uh, that, that's part of the Great Commission, and that's what the lesson's about, uh, to do our part to fulfill the Great Commission. Paul is showing his desire of the Great Commission. Now, let's look at uh, some of these verses. I'm not going to go, I'm just going to hit skip like I've always done, but I want to kind of hit some of the better ones. Let me read the first three or four verses here anyway. And here we're looking at uh, uh, Paul's introduction of the Christian faith. And, and, and look, what, what, look what Paul says. He said, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth it the hand and, and answered for himself, I thank myself happily, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before, thy, before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of, 
of I am accused of the Jews. And uh, as we look at this, uh, he's on trial now. He's here before uh, King Agrippa. He's here uh, answering these questions. And uh, look if I can, I, I, I write all these notes along the side of my Bible. And a lot of times I forget where I'm going to there with them. But uh, back up into uh, uh, chapter 24 and verse number 5. And uh, look what, it, what we find here at chapter 24 and verse number 5. It says, um, it says, for we have found this man a pestilent, uh, uh, an annoying, uh, an annoyance, uh, a danger. Uh, we have found him, calling him, you know, they call, I'm a pestilent anyway, I'm a roach. So, uh, I'm kind of like a, 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 a bug, an insect or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, and he said, and a, a mover of sedition. Or, or a troublemaker among all the Jews throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So we can see they, they're accusing him of being a troublemaker. They're accusing him of being a danger, an annoying person. Uh, he's trying to separate our, uh, 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 come between our belief. Uh, he's trying to tear down the, uh, what the synagogue stands for. Uh, but yet when you look at Paul, where did he go to every time? he went into a city he went to the synagogue he talked to them about what he knew what the Jews meant he could take Old Testament and show them how Jesus was coming through a form of a woman of a virgin be conceived and all of these things so uh, as we look at this uh, Paul was constantly telling about Jesus but but yet as we look here in our in our text today uh, they I, I they're bringing him now before the uh, grippy thou art permitted to speak for thyself the uh, uh, grippy said and and then Paul goes and says I thank you for this touching all the things where am I accused of and uh, we can see that Paul is falsely accused every time we turn around he has been accused he's been uh, uh, beat uh, he's been left for dead he's been stoned he's been uh, 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 he's been put in prison uh, everything else but does Paul quit no does Paul say God why did you get me in this position I've done everything I can uh, I don't take nothing from the people I, re I have my own business as a tent maker I'm going to do what I need to do and I'm going to keep pumping away he don't say God I'm going to quit I'm tired I'll just throw up my hands and do something else he keeps pushing and and pushing and pushing because he knows what God has done for him. Now, I know what God's done for me. I know where God brought me from. I know he took the, uh, uh, the drink away from me. I know he cleaned my mouth up. It was very, very dirty. I know he, uh, he took those. I, I used to be able to pop dirty jokes off just like that. I mean, uh, I didn't even have to read a book. They just kind of rolled out of my mouth. And I can't even tell you a good clean joke now. I, I get mixed up when I tell the little boy fell in a, a mud hole. I can't even tell it right. Uh, uh, so, you know, uh, God when God does a job God does a job amen if you're having trouble with something you need to come up here and hit the altar and say God it's here I can't get away from it well you pray and say God here I am I believe with all of my heart I want to get away from that and God will help you get away from that he does he will well especially because I knew thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. In other words, he's just saying, I know thee to be an expert in all the customs and questions which are among the Jews. He said, my, uh, my, ma my, my matter of life from my youth which was at the beginning among, among my own nation in Jerusalem, not know all the Jews. What was his matter of life from, the, from his youth? What was it about his teaching as a child? Well, some of the notes I found, and I'll see if I can't read them. It says, Paul's, Paul's presentation of the gospel to Agrippi was designed uh, to, to demonstrate the radical changes that Christ made in himself. It says the Hebrew children begin learning scripture at age five or six. Uh, when does our kids start learning scripture? 
uh, in the in the nursery classes. Uh, uh, you know, you might think you haven't taught a thing, but uh, you let one of them little kids come to you and say, and they say all about what happened to David, or they'll say all what happened to, uh, to Jonah, or they'll tell you what happened to some of these other men or women that was being taught. But it said the Hebrews taught their children as early as toddlers or five or six. Uh, uh, they heard the scripture and regular, uh, regular um, uh, religious traditions and re uh, re traditions that took place uh, from the time you all have a Sunday here, or we do, uh, that the kids stay upstairs. Why do they do that? So they can see how the church works and they can see how that the, uh, that what goes on in the church. When, when Paula was over our children's church, wherever we pastored, uh, she had the church, uh, had the children's church set up like a church and uh, the kids would come in and set uh, the little girls wouldn't cross their legs where where they could look up their you know where their dress would come up too far she would make them make her present herself a uh, regular in a, in a in a better way she would have them to uh, not talk and they would uh, uh, they would have a scripture they would sing some songs and uh, she made it kind of like a church so that the kids would know what went on upstairs the same as what went on downstairs so uh, Paul was being taught at a young age what was going on and they were there he was really scriptured in what took place and and we can see then that that he what my matter of, of life from my youth was that I was taught at a young age the scripture I was taught from a young age the uh, the traditions and the writ of rites that took place in in in, in the uh, uh, Jewish temple I was taught all of these now I know what's going on and we can look on down a little bit further and we can see in about verse uh, uh, about verse number uh, nine uh, uh, nine, nine through, uh, nine through. Well, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but we can see then the uh, Paul originally a Pharisee, and now he is talking about the prophecy of Jesus Christ. When we look in verse six down through uh, uh, verse number seven, it's talking about. Let me let me read verse number six. He said, "And now I stand and am judged for the hope." of the promise made of God unto our fathers. What is that hope? What is that promise that God made unto the Father? That they would be a son born, that we would have the Messiah, that we would have Jesus Christ. And, and look, if you will, over in Isaiah that we can uh, see uh, some real faithful scriptures over here. Uh, if I can remember where they're at, I, I should write this all down, but I, I, don't, I don't think about it at times. But over in chapter 7 and verse 14, he said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Look in chapter 9 and verse number 6. He said, for unto us a child is born, a, a, a son is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And we can see from clear back to the book of Genesis uh, when he's talking about a, a Jesus would come and, and, and bruise the heel of, of Satan and how all this would happen. And it was all the way through, uh, and, 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 and they were times when uh, when the blood over the doorpost is is applied to us today we can see how that blood is used even even that uh, from the beginning of time we can see the blood of a of a man in Genesis 3 and 4 we can see the blood the the blood of a uh, of a household in Exodus 12 when he said put the blood over the doorpost uh, we can see how the blood is there for a nation and in Leviticus 16 and and how it's there for the nation of Israel then we can and as they was uh, 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 separating the goats and the and the sheep and this kind of thing that uh, then we can see over in Matthew I mean over in John 1 and 29 behold the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world we've got all these scriptures that's bringing us up to where where Paul was is at now Paul didn't have uh, 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 John and all these others but uh, as we look at this God has promised us and we've got that hope of one day seeing him. 
I'm looking for Jesus, aren't you? I'm looking for his return, aren't you? I'm waiting on the trumpet. Brother, I'm going to be out of here before this world gets all messed up. It's already messed up, but boy, oh boy, I'm wanting out of here. And one of these days, I'm going. And believe it or not, it's closer for me than it was 20 years ago. I may not have a tomorrow. I may not even have an after a while. Neither do will you, but we need to know we're ready. And God has made us a promise that his son has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Who is that? All of us was born a sinner. All of us, when we come to that age of accountability, have, been, have, have need that find Jesus as our personal Savior. Well, then, then as I leave from there, uh, let's go down into verse number uh, uh, 9 uh, through 11, Paul's opposition, uh, opposition to the Christian faith. Uh, uh, Paul was a persecutor. Uh, uh, he said, and, and I verily thought the, uh, with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which things I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison having received authority from the chief priest, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. So Paul was as a persecutor. He was there hurting Christian people. He was there doing all of these things. Now, uh, we, I'm sure we've never killed a Christian. Uh, I'm sure we've never done put them in jail, but I'll tell you what, we probably talk pretty bad to some of them. I told some of them just get off my back. I don't want that. I don't need that. I've been to Vietnam. I'm able to do my own thing. I've got stripes on my shoulder, and I don't need help from nobody. Wasn't that stupid? That was crazy. But I see some smiles. You probably thought the same thing. I'm a man. <laughs> yeah. I realized later life I couldn't whip myself out of a paper sack, and it all wet. So just what am I? I was a sinner bound for hell. But one day I realized my need of a savior and I let him come into my life. And I thank God. My attitude changed, my, my desires have changed and I'm on my way to heaven today. And as we look at this, Paul's a saying that uh, I made all of this happen. Uh, look, look at Paul's life. I'm, I'm just going to show a few places here, uh, getting us up to where his testimony was. And uh, chapter 8, uh, uh, chapter 7, we can see how that, how that he helped the garment of, of, of Stephen as they were stoning him and how that he was there. In chapter 8, verse 1, it said Saul was consenting on to death, and, and at that uh, uh, at that time, there was a great persecu persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of, of Judea and, and Samaria, except the apostles in verse 3. And it said, and, and as for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, hauling men and women, committing them into prison. And chapter 9 and verse number 1, it said, Paul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter slander against the disciples of the Lord went into the high priest and and then we go into chapter 3 and it said as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly there was a light shine run about him and the light was from from heaven and he fell to the earth and he heard a voice say unto him Saul Saul why persecute thou me now we look at his testimony after he said that he hauled all these people in he he killed them he took them to be uh, to be put in prison he he, uh, he, he'd done all of these things, and then in verse number 11, and I, par and I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and, and, be and being e exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even on two strange cities. And he said, whereupon as I went to Damascus the, uh, with authority, from, with commission, from the chief priest at midday, O king, I saw a light. Now here we go 
in the, right here we can see that he was a persecutor and what he did in verse 10, 10 uh, and 11, verse 12 and down, we can see how uh, Paul re relates the story of his conversion to Agrippa and he told him how he done and what he done and how all of this happened. We see this in chapter nine was his actual conversion. In chapter 22, he gave his testimony again. In chapter 26, Six, he's doing the same thing again. So, uh, you know, as, as we look at it, we can see how uh, Paul uses his testimony to win people to Jesus. And today we need to be using our testimony. We all have a testimony. It might be that you was in your youth meeting and you got saved. It might have been that uh, brother or uh, somebody was preaching revival and you got saved. It might be that uh, mom or dad led you to the Lord whenever you was having devotion. It might be that I was the worst drunk in that whole community, but I found Jesus and he led you. Uh, uh, you found Jesus after somebody talking to you. And whatever your testimony is, you need to say it and tell it because God saved you from that. They might be somebody there that thinks they can't be saved because they've been married before. The Bible don't say you can't be, be saved and, and by being two or three married befores. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. You might be a homosexual and say, I'd love to get saved, but don't worry. Repent. God will save us. A drunk, you know, alcoholic. We don't, you know, the Bible calls him a drunk. We get a little, little uh, formal today and call him a, an alcoholic, but that's a drunk. You say, I can't quit. Yes, you can quit. I can't quit because, yes, you can. That, and that's your testimony. That's what people will hear you say, how you walk, how you talk. You know, I, I heard one man say, boy, you can shout all you want to, but it's how you talk after you done shout. And you can, you can holler and you can hoop and you can run, but brother, it's how you hit the floor and how you do after you hit the floor. And we need to realize all of this. And I hope you're getting something out of this. I, I've, I've studied on this and my, I've got so much out of it. I, uh, I've just kind of hit skip. I'm not going to read his testimony because uh, we've read it before. It's been taught twice but it's the same thing right here that that was in chapter 22 and the same thing that the actual conversion in chapter 9 if you want to look over there at it in verse in in verse uh see where i'm going to next uh where you want to go into verse uh, uh verse number 19 to 23 uh paul's expression of the christian faith <coughs> am i going too fast Please tell me if I am. Uh, I've caught myself, uh, I, I guess it's where I don't get to preach every week and it's hard sometimes to, uh, you know. <laughs> okay, at Paul's ministry, his activities, and let me, let me go from, uh, uh, from 19 to 23 and then we will look at this. 19, whereupon, O King Agrippi, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision but showed first unto them at, of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles and that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. In other words, he said, I was not disobedient to God whenever that light shined round about me and whenever I realized my need. I was not disobedient unto God and the heavenly vision that I saw, but I accepted it and I showed first unto Damascus and Judea, Jerusalem. And, and he, he was a witness then, his testimony then, uh, the gospel then he carried to, uh, it was universal. In verse 21, he said, for these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. 
Uh, Paul said, I was, I was uh, uh, persecuted. The saints was going to, uh, they, they caught me and they, they, uh, he was, he was uh, hated by everybody. Uh, you remember, if you remember some that we studied, uh, some of the people that heard Paul, Paul preach, they said, is this not the one that, that persecuted the Jews in the synagogue? Isn't this not the one that, that hauled out the, the Christian people? Is this not the one that stoned the people? Is this not the one? You know, they didn't really realize God did a work in him. I told you about going back to my army base after uh, 10 or 15 years. I don't know how long it had been and I went back and found some of the guys I was in with that went to work there as civilians and how that some of the men that was, that was young whenever the, I, I was there uh, was still working in, in as, as a, a civilian and uh, finally when I walked in they knew who I was after they uh, looked at me a minute and then they said, well what are you doing now? I said, well, I'm a preacher. I'm pastor in a church. And they said, who, what, what do you say? Surely not Sergeant Roach. Pastoring a church? I said, yes, sir, God can do miracles. They said, he sure does. <laughs> but they would not accept me of telling them. So God do a work in us said, having therefore obtained help of God, I continued unto this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other thing than those that the prophet and Moses did say should come, the Messiah, the, the, uh, the, the prophecy of Jesus. He gave his testimony. I spoke to them about the, uh, the prophets and what Moses and, and others should say. Uh, should come, then Christ that Christ should suffer, and that He should be the first that should raise from the dead, and show and shall show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Other words, He went on and He said, talked about the the suffering of Christ. He talked about the resurrection of li of Christ. He talked about the light uh, that Jesus Christ was the light. I look over in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, a couple verses here I want to look at, 15, uh, verse 20 and 23. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 20, it says this, uh, uh, 19, he said, if in the, if this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable, but now in Christ, if is Christ raised from the dead and become the first fruit of their sleep, of that sleep. And, and the other verse I want to look at is, uh, is found in verse number 23. Uh, let, let, me, let me go to verse 21 and 22. Uh, For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. And as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit, Afterwards, they that are Christ at his coming. In other words, Jesus Christ came as the first to come over uh, to raise from the dead. He conquered death that one day you and I. You know, when we go to the funeral home and we look up on dad or mom, dad or mom has already departed. All we're seeing is a carcass. They're in heaven. that ought to make it a little more exciting because they're at home where they've wanted to go. They're there with the loved ones. They're there with the light of the world, Jesus Christ. They're in the presence of God. That, man, that, that is a blessing when we can look upon our loved ones yeah, it hurts to look upon our loved one. It hurts to think about we won't get to see him or talk to him. But yet, if we think the good, they taught us, they trained us, they showed us, they loved us, and one day, I'm going to be with them. That ought to be our desire more than ever, that one day we can be with them. Now, we go to the part that was, never, that was not written in the book. Paul was charged as being a madman. <laughs> Festus accused Paul of being out of his mind. Jesus, his friend, 
Jesus, his friends accused him the same way. But we can see here at verse 24 and 5, and it says, As he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning has made thee mad. And he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and, and, sober, and, and soberness. Other words, Paul's changed with charged with madness as he went here. And, and, and one other verse, it said, King Agrippa, believeth thou the prophet? I know that thou believeth. Then Agrippa said, almost thou persuadeth me to be a Christian. Almost. You know, today, if, it's, if you're here and not saved, maybe it's almost you've got saved. Don't let it be almost. Don't leave this church today without knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to teach again and uh, pray for us as we study this week and pray for each other. Father, we thank you now for what you've done. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson. We thank you, Lord, for putting words and memory upon our mind, Lord. We pray, Lord, that your will be done. Bless our, our pastor this morning, Lord. Anoint him afresh. Put the words upon his, upon his tongue. Memory to his mind, dear Lord. Bless the singing as they sing. Help, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will move among us in a great way that we'll see the movement of the Holy Spirit here today and people come to the altar. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen.